Olympics is the focus at the moment. Um, <coughs> what the big surprise was, stocks rocketed. They rocket. Bonds, from natural safe haven, went down. Now, seems to all us about face, which was I was quite surprised. But people make money out of wars, and that was quite a shock. You mentioned about defence. Defence does well before the war, but not so well during the war. There are other industries like oil and gold that do really well, um, supporting industries. Um, well, just quickly, um, wars. During the war, stocks might go up. What do you think happens in the run-up to war? I before war starts. Yeah. yeah. So actually, my experience of wars, and I haven't lived through that many, fortunately, and certainly nothing that's directly affected me, but you take the Gulf War, is the run up to war is what causes uh, the sell off. And then, for example, the second Gulf War, um, it became apparent within 48 hours that Iraq was. Just a basket case in America, we're just going to run them. And, and as a result, you get a big, that, in that particular case, you've got a big rally uh, in the stocks. Uh, yeah. Because everyone realised that the war wasn't going to last very long and it was all going to be over very quickly. Um, it's, yeah. In some of them, that was the case. Some of the wars did last. I mean, the Vietnam War lasted <coughs> a bloody long time 20 odd years. It did, yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. Even I didn't realise that. I thought it was just like five, six years lasted 20 years it was a phenomenal war. this is a rough idea of stocks leading up to the three months preceding 12 major events um, now I've done this into two parts I've looked at uh, global wars and I've looked at conflict um, this data uh, comes from uh, I think one was from Deutsche Bank um, so it's relatively robust um, and there was another one from a leading institute and this was before the war this was after the war and we look at the average rally here, seven percent overall. And if we put the two pictures together, we can see quite a change. It, it was it was very surprising to me. Um, I expected it to be opposite. I use an example of the FTSE. That's what happened to the FTSE. The start of the Iraq War and where it was, how the rise. So it was a massive surprise. The bonds went down because inflation on average was higher in all wars. Um, see more money being pumped in as required. So that was an overall view. It was a surprise to me, it'll probably be a surprise to you. It'd be worth looking at the presentation in your own time. It's on the Dropbox on the news. Um, have you got any questions? Yes. Um, have you looked at uh, World War II and the stock market in the UK actually? Yes, Did it that's in there as well. So if we just go back, we'll get this to work. The, I looked at those particular wars. Okay. I guess it also depends on where the war is. I mean, if you would have bought the German stock market in the World War II, it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> yes, so <laughs> this is a very generalized view. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, it depends if you've gone short or long, doesn't it? Yeah. Really. Um, this is a very generalized view of the wars. Now, what I, what I think it will do, it'll have the motive thing. Well, if I was looking at this, if I was looking, as you said, about defence, what would that mean, defence? Particular companies, they said, did suffer, some did well, um, I'll find a particular one. Um, that one. So, obviously, as you said, geography makes a difference. So, proximity to the war, War, particularly depends on oil and imports. The oil thing, you start to look at the oil thing, it's another whole new topic on its own. It's massive. So, if somebody's into commodities, it's well worth looking at what war will do for them. Um, One of the reasons Germany suffered at the start of the uh, Ukraine crisis is that there was a fear of uh, cutting off of gas supplies to Germany um, because that's where that wonderful pipeline that they managed to build across uh, from. Uh, Azerbaijan, places like that. Um, so yeah, ge geography does matter a lot, and and you know, in truth, if you look at the, most of the wars that we've had, they're in economically insignificant areas, such as Vietnam, such as 
Afghanistan and places like that in terms of their outright industrial. They may be geogra they may be important uh, in geopolitical terms, but not in industrial terms. I would say most of the time. There was particular things that did suffer. Um, things like IT, it went down. Um, which was surprised uh, the airline industry, travel industry. You think oh, there'd be a lot more flights actually was a lot less because people were going on holidays. So there are particular industries you could look at if that was your industry that would be well worth looking at. If you look at an index viewpoint, that's different. As you said, the German market is different. Um, but, so that's the overall viewpoint. It's worth, I think, having a look at it. It'll only take you three or four minutes to read it. It's not it's that heavyweight, it's bullet point stuff. But it was a surprise to me. I thought it would be the other way around. I thought everything would go down, and everyone put a bonds. Um, but there's a government draw a lot more cash out during wars. Uh, that affects bonds, it particularly affected yields. And one particular sl slide, which was, I thought, particularly useful, was that one. These are the sort of the rate of returns. Here's your periods of war. Um, your returns, particularly <coughs> wars, you see the rates are somewhat different. In the war, capitals were better, the war, bonds were worse. So, overall, whether people bought more bonds, but the no, yields were lower. That, okay, you have to think about okay, what wars cost money. Yes. And therefore, governments have to issue lots and lots and lots of debt. Uh, I believe I'm not. I can't remember now, but I think it was only a couple of years ago that the UK finished paying off their war bonds from 19 the first war, 1914 to 1918. Okay, just about finished paying that off, I believe. Mm. Uh, so the, yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense now. Right. Yeah. So uh, yeah. wars cost money, uh, and governments uh, basically, it's almost they, they print money, but they do it by issuing bonds, etc. And that's yeah. so. Hence, bonds are not usually a great investment uh, over a war. Uh, but are they but still, the still part, secure investment? I take it. Depends if you're on the winning side or yes, the losing okay. side. <laughs> yes. Okay, so obviously the losing side is unlikely to ever repay you the value of your bond. Sure. So you probably don't want to be buying um, Afghanistan 30 year debt. It's, uh, <laughs> it's unlikely. Unless, uh, mind you, it's backed by heroin, so it's a quite a good investment. <laughs> yeah. but apart from that, yeah, you probably don't want to be. But the realistic, the thing with wars is that the build up to them is where the moves come. That's where the huge sell-offs and the panic comes and then when you get to the war usually although i thought i you know god forbid we ever have a proper war you know a proper war i mean sort of you know because a proper war will be over very quickly i suspect but they keep saying there's not really much point in uh, trying to buy birds and sell stocks when you can see a mushroom cloud just uh, just over the horizon it's really pretty pointless so there are better things to do but for the sort of the sort of wars that we the proxy wars that we seem to have around the planet uh yeah, this is an interesting thing, so make sure you sort of have a good read of this. And I'll probably stick this up somewhere else as well. I'll have a word about it later, if that's okay. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Well, Any other questions while Mark stood up? Sure, yes. No, okay, thank you. Um, just before we move on, okay, there's a question here about China and selling treasuries, and I'm going to answer that a bit later because it's the one story I've got. Um, Okay, Ravi is going to talk to us about Chinese GDP. Sorry, let me just open that in another window, sorry. Should we watch a little video? Bloomberg do like a little video. Scroll down. I like a little video. Okay. Watch the video. That's all right. Okay, Ravi. So uh, just uh, this is Chinese GDP story, by the way. The Chinese GDP beat. Yeah. I believe. How far down do you want us to go? Where do you want us to go to? Anywhere? 
object to <coughs> and, and or, or like we do want to. Does everyone want to read it? And then yeah. or, or I, I can just. Oh, you give us a you give us a pricey, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so China's uh, GDP growth uh, with the expectations. The forecast was like six point three, yeah, or six point yeah, six point eight, uh, and uh, it has like uh, the GDP number was six point nine, and uh, so which is which is good when compared to the forecast, but the target is seven, right, the growth rate of seven. And uh, when compared to the previous months, uh, this is the lowest uh, since uh, uh, 2009. So this uh, this news uh, uh, has uh, generated some yeah, traction in the stock markets and the forex markets. So Chinese yuan went up, the Australian dollar went up and uh, yeah now okay um, <laughs> uh, so yeah and the stocks rallied a little yep. but in the long term uh, there are there is some skepticism because of the uh, production uh, like reduce reduce production and uh, and also the prices going down, uh, and but uh, but the retail sales went. The uh, retail sales figure was uh, better than expected. Where's, it, where's that chart on the retail sales figure again? Yeah, it's right. ten point. Yeah, top somewhere. Yeah. To deliver investment potential takes uh, okay. teamwork, forward thinking. Do you like the Bloomberg site? Loves it. Uh, yeah. Right, here's the retail sales, sorry, go on. Yeah. So the retail retail sales were like better than yeah, uh, the forecast. But, what? but <coughs> yes, uh, I was going to ask you, because uh, it ties in with this question, and I noticed that the answer is actually in this article, I didn't know it was this article I was talking about. So one of the things that they talk about uh, as a direct result of, oh, uh, it's a different story. Uh, okay. <coughs> Alright, you finish that and I'll go on to Confusion, you. tension, uncertainty, Sorry. focus, <laughs> using interactive brokers. Bloomberg are just determined to get their, <laughs> <laughs> get, their <advertising, laughs> get their advertising, get their advertising through whatever happens. Yeah, okay. Um, I think, that personally, I think the story in, in this, as far as the GDP is concerned, this, this paragraph here is quite important. Um, we appear to be getting some sort of two-speed economy. We, we touched on this last week with one of the stories about how perhaps China is turning from being a major manufacturing, well, this is always going to be a major manufacturing company, but it, the, the balance between manufacturing and um, service is changing and adapting. And perhaps, I think there's a story last week that perhaps growth is stronger because they're not measuring service correctly, uh, whatever. Um, it's definitely 7% is low. When I, I go back two or three years and we were always told 8% was a minimum needed, they've sort of politically massaged that down a bit now and it's now 7%. Uh, but bear in mind that 7% today is probably 20% four years ago or five years ago in terms of, in pure, uh, terms of the size of the economy. Um, what matters from our point of view is how the market's taken it. And the market seems to have taken it that actually things are going okay and not that bad. And hence this morning's reaction in bonds and stocks where you've got the bonds have come off quite hard in general and stocks have rallied quite hard in general. I'm pretty sure that that's a direct reflection of these Chinese numbers. Uh, there were a few comments overnight and we will get some this week. I don't know if you're aware, but certainly if you live in London, you will be made aware this week there is a Chinese state visit. And trust me, when you're trying to get yourself across London... <laughs> Okay, they've done this before for some reason that we seem to treat these people like gods and we shut all the roads and generally cause mayhem and chaos everywhere. So don't be surprised if you're trying to get across London sometime and you're finding it very difficult this week uh, because, uh, yeah, ma major state visit. Uh, I think they're meeting the Queen and various other bits and pieces as well. So, um, Anything you want to add, Ravi, or any questions for Ravi on Chinese GDP? I'll talk about the bond thing in a minute. Um, anyway. There was a particular in, in the Bloomberg article that was 
something in there which I didn't understand, I'm just not sure. Yeah. Um, it said that the Aussie dollar was up slightly, but the euro and yen paired the, their advance, which I didn't understand. Well, something. both have been going up over the last <coughs> 10, 15 days. Yes. And they pulled that back, but a bit of profit taking came in, basically. Okay. That's, that's what they Simple as that. Yes, as simple as that, yeah. Uh, anything else? Anyone else? Okay, thank you. For me, the, the more important uh, aspect of this, uh, for market moving, uh, this is interesting, but the um, and important, but the, the the relevant bit is what's going on with bonds, and I like this story. So China is still quite well. It's not the best English I've ever seen. Many China selling tons of U.S. debt. Americans couldn't care less. So one of the theories we've had, and one of the reasons why people have been positioned short treasuries for quite a few months, is this expectation that uh, China is going to start turning around from being net buyers of U.S. government debt to net sellers of U.S. government debt. And the treasury market has defied um, popular belief and has actually gone up in price, not down in price, over the last few months. Um, and as it says, there have been loads of dire warnings about China's retreat from young uh, government debt. However, so and I was asked a question just on here on the screen, uh, you know, who is buying? If China's selling, who the hell's buying them? Is it the government? Well, actually, it's not. Yeah. It's domestic mutual funds who are buying record amounts of US treasuries at auctions. Uh, US treasuries also, uh, US <coughs> investors also increasing their share of the $12.9 trillion market for the first time since 2012 according to Bloomberg's analysis, and these are the uh, US <coughs> fund shares at Treasury auctions. You can see they're buying over 40% of uh, currently in the auctions. Uh, buying has been crucial in keeping a lead on America's financing costs as China uh, has been pairing its stake for the first time since 01. Yields on Treasuries have surprised everyone by falling this year, dipping below 2% last week. Um, it's not the 